you mentioned that you told your wife, like, you didn't want to do some of these jobs because what if somebody sees me? And I hear that a lot. <laughs> and you hear people like, man, I ain't working on McDonald's such and such. They might see yeah. me. I don't sweep in there. It feels like there is beneath them. Yeah. When sometimes, you know, hey, they need all walks to do something before you got to another level, which you said, okay, I got to sweep this floor, but I'm not going to sweep this floor forever. It's right. just a means to an end. Right. Get me in the door and I'm going to do something else. So you're on the set of Friday as a security guard. That's right. You had mentioned that you had never, ever really told anybody that you wanted to do acting. Yep. You wanted to be behind the camera. Yep not in front of the camera. Yep. And so when did your big break come? When did you get an opportunity? You know what was amazing? I went, I, I had friends in the business because doing security, I knew a lot of location managers. Right. And the location managers would hire the security. And this location manager became a friend of mine. He said, hey man, Denzel's shooting down here in the jungle. It's a movie called Training Day. You want to come down and take a look? I was like, I get to watch Denzel do his thing? I'm like, yeah, man, I'm coming. I'm, yeah. I'm walking. I said, when is it? He said, man, come on. They, they shooting all night. So he said, come, you got to come late, like 10 o'clock. About 11 o'clock, they'll start the filming and the whole thing. And so I'm down there in the jungle, man. And I'm sitting there going, ooh, and I'm watching. There's Denzel, the car, the whole, that cul-de-sac, the whole deal. And I'm going, ooh, this is hot. And I'm watching Denzel get ready. He got the chains on. He got the, yeah. the do-rag, the whole thing. Is that the King Kong scene? This is the King Kong scene. <laughs> Bruh, now, let me tell you this, and this is, you gotta understand how magical this was, man. Antoine Fuqua, the director, hey. saw me standing there. And again, I, by this time, remember I went back, I went back to the gym. Right. Because I had been going back to the gym about a year or so, I was kinda still in shape. Right. He said, hey man, you wanna be in this scene? I said, I said, yeah. He said, hey man, just take your shirt off. You got, you got, see your tank top. I'll put you in the scene. Bruh, I'm like never acting. You talking about no acting. Right. I stand there, I'm looking, I'm like, okay, okay. And I just got that NFL man, like, like you know, you, you about to come in, you go, you facing off against somebody. Right. And, they, and, I, and I said, just don't say nothing and just mad dog it. I said, okay. Don't tell me. And that was it. And so Denzel's doing all this. Da, 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 and you see, I'm just standing there the whole time like this nigga. I'm, you know, and dude, it changed my life. When you say like that went to the Oscars, bro. Like right. it was me and Denzel when they showed that scene on the right. Oscars. My right. mother was like, you in the Oscars. <laughs> I said, well, I didn't, I'm at, not at the Oscars, but I'm in this scene. Right. And I was like, I was hooked. Like, when I say hook, because all I had to do was just, because remember, man, I'm on the NFL field and my mind is already going on. Right. I was like, this is what I always want to do. I said, man, now I'm in my element. Don't mess this up, right? Bruh, watching this, uh, then I got a chance to look at his script. And his script was on the card. And he had written, the wages of sin is death on the top of his script. I was like, he's done. And I watched how he prepared. And I was like, that's that's that level I have to get to. That's what I and, I, and all of a sudden, there it was, the acting thing. And what happened was, Cube remembered me. He was like, yo, man, you the security guard, because everybody loved Training Day. When right. Training Day came out, he said, man, we doing another Friday. I got a call from the location manager. They said, hey, man, Cube, people want to see you. I went in, it was me, Cat Williams, sitting next to each other in a little bitty room. And he was like, man, come on in. We got this. Cause Tiny Lister didn't want to do my good friend. Yeah. God bless his yep. soul. Yeah. Tiny Lister didn't want to do the third one. And they right. said, we got a new character, a guy named Damon and the whole right. thing. I was like, and see, let me, you got to understand too. I had nothing to lose. Right. Like when I say nothing to lose, I came in there like Craig and Day Day. Just the niggas I want to see. You know, <laughs> hey, bro, I had nothing. I went back to Flint on them. I was yeah. like, oh, this is where I came. These are the cats I knew. Right. And I came in there, man, and off the cube, everybody was like, ah, they're like, ah. Oh. And then Kat came in and just the audition. And they said, you in, you in. And Friday after next, I listen, I saw Cube probably about a month ago. And I walked up to him, man. I said, dude, thank you. Thank you. I said, you have no idea how many careers you started 
just by giving us that shot. Right. A lot of people never, ever really give props where props is due. Mm-hmm. You know, because they're like, well, I didn't get that much money. and, and, and But, dude, that was my start. No. Well, I, listen, I was you in a little bitty cubicle. Man, I was just thankful. I was walking around. And listen, and what was so crazy is me and Kat, Kat was homeless at the time. Wow. So Kat was living in his trailer. And me and Kat said, hey, man. And I remember talking to Kat. I said, Kat. I said, we never get another opportunity. We got to make sure they remember us. I said, because we did two new cats in this whole thing. They know everybody else. Right. I said, but it's me and you. And remember, man, I was not going to let what happened in my football career happen to my entertainment career. Man, I'm, I'm listening that you tell the story, T. And the way you telling the story, football never gave you the high that what you got by just doing that. Exactly. I knew I was in my destiny. When I say, and this is what I'm saying, I found my destiny. I was gone. People, when people see that scene in Friday After the Next, look, you turn the sound down, it ain't a comedy. Right. We was crying. Right. We were deep. They was so in it. He was crying. I was crying. People were sitting by the, the monitors like, what are we looking at right now? Because I was so gone in it. And I said, this is where, and then it was so wild. Because I didn't even want money anymore. I said, I want that feeling again. Mm-hmm. You know, I, you know what I mean? I, right. it's, it's too, it's cause you could talk about athletes and money and all that stuff, but there's a point when I'm sure when you just catching and doing everything right, you want to, you want to chase that again. They call it the zone. They call it what, what it's just flow, whatever that is. And let me tell you, you know, when I hit that flow again, when I was doing white chicks, that movie, white chicks. Everything I said just blow. Friday up next, white chicks came off of. Well, it came after that, right? Because again, you're talking about the the, the whole the black Hollywood is very small, mm-hmm. and they saw. And once Friday after next hit, people were like, "This dude." And so, what was so great is Keenan Ivory Williams was like, "Hey man, we got to get this dude a shot." Right. You know what I mean? Because right. they're like, man, we want some of that on us. And it, right. and it kept on all my business, Shannon, in this town has been repeat business. I mean, the the reason I was with all these Sandler movies, mm-hmm. my, uh, Adam Sandler called me. But the thing is, when I did Longest Yard, which was my revenge on the NFL, right? <laughs> me and Michael Irvin, right. the whole movie, yeah, I was like, got- this is the one everybody going to remember. Right. Like, good God. Like, who gets that? Right. You know what I mean? And then, and I remember Chris Rock was like, hey, man, he's on the movie. Longest job. He said, dude, you killing. I got something for you. I said, what is it? He said, t- don't worry about it. I got something for you. I go home. The script for Everybody Hates Chris is literally on my doorstep. I open that up. He's like, I want you to play my dad. Because he saw me and my wife and my two kids out there all, in Santa Fe, New Mexico, when we was filming Longest Yard, he was watching. And that's the thing another people, you got to remember, everybody is watching. Watch everybody is watching. And so then I played Chris's dad. And everybody hated Chris for four years straight. This man, when I look at my life, man, I just think, I just thank God for every, every opportunity. And now this is another thing, because i am now reached the point, because I play with all these guys, and they're gone. Now I'm losing actors. <sighs> Man, Andre Bauer passed away mm-hmm. last week. And he took me under his wing, man. You talk about one of the best actors right. of our generation. Right. I mean, Juilliard trained, absolutely incredible, Emmy Award winning, dramatic yeah. beast. Right. Brooklyn Nine Nine, right? Brooklyn Nine Nine, who was able to come and flip it to a comedy like that, and I was like, man, what is the secret? And he never. This is nothing. He was he was like a super all pro, who could have looked down on all of us, but decided he was just gonna pull us all up with him. Sixty one years old, he was like my big brother. Right. I look at. Guys that are dying. When I look at Michael Clark Duncan, it's gone. Mm-hmm. Tiny Lister, gone. Uh, Lance Reddick, gone. I don't know, like, Chadwick Boseman, gone. We did a movie draft day together. Mm-hmm. Okay? And I'm going, man, you don't have forever. You don't. 
you got to go for it. You got to get what you got, what you are come to get now. And you can't waste time. You can't treat it like, well, I'll whatever you tomorrow. Because I've seen it in the, in the NFL. And everybody thought, and this is the thing, everybody had determined certain people that already won. Like, I won life, he won. You know, people say, hey, won the internet, whatever. It ain't never over it. It's never how you start. It's how you finish. Right. And let me tell you, when I'm done, I, and I'll be honest with you, man, I'm just getting started. I truly, truly feel I have the same energy that I had when I first started. I'm really thankful to be sitting here with you right now. And I, but I, I admire you for it, but just your transition. You know what I mean? And the energy that you bring. Your, you do, your passion is palpable. And I'm the same way. I'm 100% passion. Right. That's all I am. Right. You know what I mean? I don't know no other way. I have no other way. I, I do everything like I'm getting a million dollars. I don't know if you have any horror stories, but Terry, but, uh, Terrence Howard said that he was only paid like $12,000 yeah. for doing hustle and flow. You have any horror stories in which you felt that you didn't get the proper compensation that you deserve? I, first of all, I, and I understand what Terrence is saying, but I have never, ever, ever looked at whatever money I got as a horror story. Mm -hmm. If I did it, I loved it. Right. See, but this is the problem. I have a, I, there's a saying I have to say, you can't nod yes and mean no. If I nod yes, I looked at the terms. They say, okay, you're going to pay me four grand for two days. Okay. If I said, okay, I can't come back later and be like, ah, I only got four grand for that. That's what hey, man, presented. that's what you presented. Right. So there it is. Don't, ain't no, to me, I'm not, I'm not going back on that. Right. And this keeps my heart always full of gratitude because once I start to complain mm -hmm. about any of that, it starts to mess with my legacy. I didn't get nothing for training day. How about that? I didn't get a zero, but it changed my life forever. You didn't know who I was if it wasn't for a no paying job. First of all, it named somebody to play football for money when they start. You don't get no money. Right. You play football for free. You play basketball for free. Then you get all the way to the pros and you get the millions. Ain't no other way, bruh. There's nothing else. Wait, there's no way to hop, skip, and jump this thing. You see what I'm saying? But that's the thing. People are trying to invent ways to get right to the money. But, hey, man, first of all, nobody knew who I was, and I got my shot. I got paid maybe four grand on Friday after next, but that's why I came up to Cuba and said, thank you. Thank you. That was a start. That was a start. Now... They, 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 Ooh, I make money now. <laughs> Want to join Club Shay Shay? Become an official member by hitting that subscribe button where you never know who's going to be joining us for drinks and conversation. Don't be late to the party because you know we like to do something before two something.